proceeded on leave today, would you have any money to survive on? Or would it now be time for you to think about how to make money? After blowing out on retirement, at 60, would you have secured your finances through savings or a pension scheme? My name is Nana Ekuya Mensa Brampa, and in pensions, I meet some individuals on the brink struggling to get by after years of work. The stories, the experiences, and the reality. A pension is basically a long-term savings plan with tax relief. Getting tax relief on pensions means some of your money that would have gone to the government as tax goes into your pension instead. Ghana's pension system has seen an evolution with the transition into basic social security scheme in 1965 and the creation in 1972 of segment administrators, the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, SNET. Ghana's public and private sector pension systems are integrated with every Ghanaian citizen able to access a modern three-tier structure which is overseen by the National Pensions Regulatory Authority, NPRA, under the management of SNIT. The first year is a compulsory pay-as-you-go scheme contributed to by formal sector workers, 13.5%. The contribution is managed by SNIT. The second tier is a defined contributory occupational pension scheme mandatory for workers with 5% contribution made on behalf of members. This contribution is managed privately by approved trustees. We felt that it would be good to separate the monthly pension from the tier two, which is the lump sum. And that will also give flexibility to the workers to decide themselves which fund manager they want to deal with. So we wanted the workers to have the freedom to choose so that there is competition. Instead of everything being in, on SNIT, this worker will say, I'm going to data bank, somebody will go to enterprise, and then they will see the return, the return that they get from each of them. So that was the whole idea. And to make it the workers to have a hold on their tier two. The third tier, which includes all provident funds and all other pension funds outside tiers one and two, is a voluntary scheme. But traditionally, traditionally, people save towards their pension. As far as we are concerned, you know, when we say traditionally, people invest in their children. In other jurisdictions, parents don't, don't, uh, depend on their children in their old age because these are very former uh, jurisdictions they have good pensions and the rest so they don't really rely on their children when they are old in order to make ends meet but in Ghana uh, informally in the traditional setup people invest in other areas in such a way that when they grow old they will be taken care of by their I mean, their siblings, by their children, and their grandchildren. Meet 52-year-old Thomas Barr. He is a worker in active service in the formal sector with a baggage of loans. He started saving at age 51 and made attempts to save money whilst his employer paid his SNIT contributions. But his problem started when he took his first loan in his early 30s. This thirst for loans grew stronger and he began to take loans to pay off loans. And that's what brought me down. A problem, loans upon loans. In fact, I go in for loan to pay school fees, loans to take care of health, loans. Even I'm going for loan to pay loans. So it's like every time in your life is loan. And there's this, this system they call additional loan. Overdraft, as for overdraft, you can't count. I know we're saving as Sawa Rab Mag in those days, and that's why I work first. So, the problem of saving, I couldn't save. Couldn't save because I, I, I was 
told Sunit to go then. And because of that, my mind was off. And not because Sunit was not good. Me, myself, I, I didn't have the education to save for my future. Like Thomas, there are lots of workers with similar challenges. Torn between saving for the future, paying for loans, and securing pensions on retirement. When you think about a retirement plan, you should be thinking about um, what, how much money do I need to live comfortably when I retire? What would I like to be doing when I retire? So if you, and you need to think about it in terms of the money you earn today. So if you use, let's say you're earning 3,000 today, a month, you need to ask yourself, will 3,000 be sufficient for me in retirement? or can I live on less than 3,000? Your retirement plan is that document, for want of a better word, that kind of builds the picture of your retirement. And then you will take different steps to achieve it. But the plan is what you will follow until you get there. And even into retirement, you will follow that plan because you'll be there in retirement for possibly 20 or even 30 more years. On retirement, experts say the ball game is different. Although the Social Security and National Insurance Trust scheme has been designed for every worker, only a little above 1.6 million, representing about 11% of workers in the country, are actively contributing. Formed some 27 years ago, the National Pensioners Association has over 80,000 members, although not all formal sector workers who have retired are members of the association. It's not been all rosy for every member of the association and the major challenge for most of these members is health care. People are facing problems health-wise. Health-wise, people are suffering. Uh, we, have, we have buried some of our, more, most of our people we buried them because of health-wise. With over 200,000 pensioners in the country, not all fall under the association's umbrella. Members meet regularly to motivate each other. They contribute welfare and receive support when needed. Minister says I'm to ask you how you can put your pension in 55 years. They're from voluntary pension, and I'm called pension. I'm called pension. I'm called pension. I'm called pension. Colonel 4,250. Sika pension for the job. Now, the baby snit. Now, me join a snit. Snit between the car. There are five cities, 50 pesos. Five cities, 50 pesos. And I did two America. But I was able to manage because my war. Uh, uh, golf is on. Now, my share say a simidine, kakra, 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 kakra. To be formed back up pension, no me simi and kasa mi fee. But there's still more. Hey, I simi fee baby, I'm a qua, me dimiti, a betto. To me try as me new baby, but long last, no. Eh, long guard focus say, baby, I'm a seeing now. This is me with me high dying. Think I'm a me, my green saying, Kaja pension, dear, me buffy ya. Nkamediya,ape if I die, my wife should be paid. It's been done to the uh, military, the uh, police, and some other people. Why can't the SNIT also apply this to all pensioners? So that when the one dies, the, the wife or the husband may be paid till she also goes away. Period. But when is that in her? Because a widow or a widower suffers a lot. According to SNIT, about 230,000 people, representing 10% of Ghanaians, about 60, receive the monthly SNIT pensions. The National Pensions Regulatory Authority, NPRA, 
is the regulator and monitor of all three-tier pension schemes. This year, the authority recouped 6.2 million cities from over 70% of employers who defaulted in the payment of employees' pension benefits. It is seeking legal action against 15 employers who have failed to pay. Apart from SNIT, it deals with 23 corporate trustees. The first thing we had to do under the law was to uh, license these corporate trustees because for the first time, tier two and tier three were created in our, in our pension uh, uh, structure because it used to be only tier one, which was SNIT. So we had a mandate to uh, license tier two and tier three operators, and these are the corporate trustees. And as part of our mandate, we have to ensure that we inspect their activities both on-site and off-site. So every month, they have to give us their operational report, their investment reports, you know, uh, and every quarter, they have to put all these together and then provide them for us. Now that becomes the subject of our off-site inspection. Then on top of that, we actually go to the site to check the records that they have been providing for us in the off-site inspection to make sure that exactly they say what they say is what they're doing. Trustees of these contributions also have their own concerns. These include porting of members, which is currently being put on hold by the regulator. It's in the law that once you move from one trustee to the other, members should be able to port their contributions to their current trustees. But currently, the regulator has put a hold on porting, which is a challenge to us. They put a, po a hold on porting because of what we call the suspense account. That is data which are not up to date. But we can say that some trustees are up to date with their data. Some also are not up to date. I wouldn't be able to tell for other trustees. So the, for those who are up to date with their suspense accounts, they cannot be mixed together to, with those who are not complying. So it really frustrates competition when it comes to sourcing for um, clientele. The new National Pension Scheme instituted by the National Pensions Act, Act 766, ensures that every Ghanaian worker receives retirement benefits when due. In 2020, however, the first batch of retirees from the Tier 2 and Tier 3 faced some challenges with their lump sum. When the complaints started coming, we, we went around the country and solicited the views of our members. And really we had uh, those challenges coming up, that uh, people uh, were shortchanged, especially those who retired in 2020. Uh, because you know, this uh, second, the third year pension began in 2010. But it payment effectively we came, we came on board in 2020. It was last year. Right. And now we talked about the transfer of the TPFA. For six years, their contributions were in Bank of Ghana. It was attracting interest at TV rates, for example. Uh, and then after the transfer, it started attra attracting interest at uh, government bond rates, which was a little bit higher. So the investment uh, history was not very smooth because the schemes did not manage the, the funds right from the very beginning. So naturally, the first batch of retirees had a bit of a blip in terms of the returns. And the, the return rate was not as effective as it would have been if the money had been transferred from day one. So we've had situations where there are complaints that the lump sum that people received in 2020 were not as good as perhaps maybe they would have received under the PNDC law 247 if it was still with SNIT. That is a matter which is being investigated. There's a committee that has been set up and the government has given a commitment that in event of the committee uh, pr uh, producing this report and it is found out that there was any shortfall, the government is prepared to pay up the shortfall. Labour consultant Ben Arthur says despite some challenges experienced in the pension scheme, it still remains paramount to the worker. You don't just save only for pensions. You also make savings in such a way that when you become at any point in time unemployed, you can also fall on those savings, at least to fill in the gap until you get 
uh, employed some other time. But workers, I don't know whether generally they take some of this education seriously. For Thomas Barr, he still has regrets. He currently juggles working as an HR manager and as an employee with the Zongo Development Fund. With eight years to retire, he says despite his pension contributions, he cannot overcome regrets of many years wasted in borrowing. Tapra just sent me my tier two money before February. That's 130 something cities. I doubt when that can, you can save that one. Having my eight years left for me to go and retire. The other time I sat down and began to calculate, even recently, I took a loan from a bank, which I wouldn't like to mention their name here. 14,000, I end up paying 38,000. Now, looking at the excess money I paid, could that help me put up at least two bedrooms, I mean, uh, two rooms for myself? So my inability to save made me that at this my age, I have just some few years to go on retirement. I am now starting a building. The whole concept of retirement has changed and people have not caught up with it. They don't realize that you need to have a plan for yourself that doesn't rely on family or friends for support, that doesn't even rely on SNIT. Like what SNIT gives you should be a bonus. It shouldn't be, if your SNIT check doesn't come, then you're finished. Ben Arthur implores employers to also verify with the National Pensions Regulatory Authority to ensure fund managers are licensed. As soon as they take their salaries, they are not also interested in what is going into their pensions and the rest. So at the end of the day, you realize that it's not being paid. How many of us have made contributions to SNET and have bothered to go to SNET to find out the status of your contribution? Many people don't care. It is when they are getting very close to pension. That is when their antennas are waking and they want to know what is happening in the industry. For example, some people will get say 1,500 at their monthly salary, but then they get 500 for their housing, 200 for their distance. So when you count that, that is around 1,000. But they are only paying it on 1,500 even though they are going home with 2,500. So when they go on pension, their pension will be determined using 1,500 as the maximum. And depending on the number of years they have worked, they may get a percentage of that 1,500. Already, because they were going home with 2,500, already they've lost about half of that. So this is the problem. So, what both the employer and the worker should do is to consolidate all entitlements and pay it on all of them. The Trades Union Congress says some reforms in the new law is the only solution. Really, I think reforms will be the, will be the best solution to this issue. And it is something that I think we have started and we will continue to, to agitate for that until the right thing the right payment is made to our our members. It's a good thing for us to do. I mean, reviewing of the whole the whole the whole law that is not beneficial to the seven sisters and, and four seven. Another reform we want to say is that this uh, uh, new pension, the seven sixes, was to make pensions I mean uh, equal to everybody and to bring everybody on board. But here we are, some of the uh, security and the rest are not part of the pension. It's also we see that as. Uh, it is not bringing the unity of purpose that the, uh, the law or the new pensions wanted to address. Uh, it makes it uh, undermining. So I think that it is time for all of us to come together to look at all these naked of all these issues and uh, ensure that we have a better pension system in this country. With a five-year strategic plan spanning 2022 to 2026, the NPRA is focusing on increasing pensions coverage with a disciplined market. We've grown the private sector pensions to um, 23 billion mm -hmm. and the public sector pensions to uh, 9 billion, almost 10 billion now. So by the end of the first quarter of 2021, pension funds in Ghana was uh, 33.4 billion. Mm -hmm. you know. And if over a period of 10 years, an asset of an industry has grown that tremendously. 
then you can imagine the next 10 years. So if you look at our strategic plan, we are saying uh, as our focus that apart from the 40% penetration of the informal sector, we also want to grow pension funds to 50 billion by 2026. Now, if you have an industry that is growing so astronomically, then you begin to see that the potential for it to overtake all other you know, areas of, of the economy are very, very high. Potentially, it is the biggest area that we all have to keep our eye on. The NPRA is also looking forward to increasing coverage in the informal sector from the current 3% to 40% by 2026. For Thomas Barr, the 55-year-old, counting down to retirement, he has this advice for all workers. When you see the sun rise and sets, time has no limit. Time runs too fast and quick. And that is my personal advice to young nurses, young teachers, young guys, start saving now. And if you want, make sure if you start work before 8.25, target yourself by 8.35, your dream building, you should complete it. If you are 14, you don't start saving, then please, you are in trouble. When you are there at the end of the month, they will give you allowances, then you see that your salary is a, a, a bit a, a bit at this thing, so you will enjoy. But you forget that you can. So you must think about the contribution that you make so that when you come on retirement, you won't come and suffer. Those who are working now, they must plan and see themselves as we pensioners. Take yourself that I'm a pensioner. What have I done so that when I, I start my pension this thing, my problems that I, I will face or whatever, that's how your life will be. So you must plan well towards the pension. Once you also decide to start saving for retirement, you need to choose wisely on how you want to invest money to secure your future.